Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We're looking at all rain out to the west now, but will we be looking at snow by tomorrow night? Another Macomb County politician snagged on the government's widening corruption investigation, but this one has a twist. The Macomb Township trustee was allegedly taking bribes from his own employer. But we begin with a tragedy in Ann Arbor. A 16-year-old hit and killed by a car outside Huron High School. And now there are concerns about how safe this busy intersection really is. That 11th grader was hit while crossing the road a little after 7 this morning. And uh, this is the intersection where it happened. This is Fuller Road and Huron Parkway. It was 16-year-old Justin Tang who was hit and killed. Coco McAboy standing by live. It's got to be a shock, Coco. Devin and Kimberly, the community is saddened and outraged after the death of 16 year old Justin Tang. He was hit and killed right in this area in front of Huron High School. He was an 11th grade student at Community High and now students, parents and a former school board member are all saying this could have been prevented if the city just had better crosswalks. It's not every day somebody dies like right within a mile of you realistically so students like Quentin Hargrow and John Bellows are dealing with the raw reality that 16 year old Justin Tang was hit and killed this morning right in front of their high school friends and family and anyone that knew him I'm sorry for your loss and it has many questioning the safety of the crosswalks there's like things designed for safety that people aren't using Kathy Griswold, a former Ann Arbor Board of Education member, has been fighting the city on its crosswalks for years now. Any of our school crosswalks do not meet minimum standards. She points to the city's controversial pedestrian crosswalk ordinance that's different from the rest of the state and the lack of lighting at crosswalks as part of the problem. Parents repeatedly came and pleaded for us to improve crosswalks. Parents like Lauren Sargent. I was absolutely shocked and horrified because this is something that needs to be fixed and it's fixable. As the community mourns the loss of a young student who had so much going for him, they hope this tragedy will lead to some change in the city. Every small incremental improvement uh, is a result of a major fight and we need to change that. So obviously a lot of students grieving the loss of Justin Tang and the school district says that they will be providing grief counselors to students across all of the schools in the district. Reporting live, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Yeah, Coco, let's get back to the, the crosswalk ordinance. It is different there from the rest of the state. That's right, Devin. So here in the city of Ann Arbor, how it's different is drivers are supposed to stop for pedestrians when they are actually at the curb instead of when they're in the crosswalk. Yeah. So people are saying what that does is it gives people more confidence and they end up crossing the street thinking that drivers are going to stop for them. But in a lot of cases, it's not happening. Not necessarily so. All right, Coco. Kim. Okay, now to a developing story we've been following all afternoon. We set this breaking news alert on the Click on Detroit app at 2.50 this afternoon. The head of Rizzo Environmental Services resigns amid the ongoing bribery probe in Macomb County. That announcement came as yet another politician is charged with taking bribes. Let's get to Guy Gordon. He's live. And Guy, this time it's a Macomb Township trustee we're talking about here. Another week, another trustee, uh, Kimberly. Last week, a Clinton Township trustee, Dean Reynolds. Uh, today, it was Clifford Freitas, a Macomb Township trustee. He's been at the job for four years. According to this criminal complaint from the uh, district attorney, he engaged in a pattern of corruption, and that included uh, demanding and receiving thousands of dollars in bribes from a company seeking a municipal contract with Macomb Township, a company that, ironically, was his own employer. Clifford Freitas' own LinkedIn page shows that his employer is Rizzo Environmental Services. While Rizzo is not mentioned in the federal complaint, it states that Freitas demanded a $7,500 bribe for supporting his company in getting a township contract. Wiretaps show he gave sensitive bid information to the vendor to underbid competitors and then demanded another $35,000 after the company landed the contract. Mr. Freitas? Here. In the summer of 2015, Freitas recused himself from voting on the Rizzo contract, saying it was a conflict of interest. But the complaint shows, behind the scenes, the company gave him a $7,500 loan as a payoff. 
Reed has had nothing to say following his arraignment, but has heard several times on government wiretaps and surveillance. In May 2016, FBI undercover informants videotaped Freitas accepting $2,000 cash so he could start paying off that loan. An excerpt from that recorded conversation? The informant, yeah, so here's a, I think this is two, let me make sure. The trustee, okay, oh, thank you. The informant, there is, and that, uh, I mean, so that way there's no record of it or anything. Freitas, okay. And this criminal complaint is loaded with excerpts of conversations just like that one. We'll put it up at clickondetroit.com. In the meantime, uh, Freitas was released on a $10,000 unsecured bond. He must surrender his passport, also remove all firearms from his home. Now, coming up at 6 o'clock, Armara McDonald is going to have an exclusive interview with the new owner of Rizzo Environmental Services. We're going to ask him, did he know about these criminal clouds that was hanging over this company before he bought it? And what he will do to mend fences with these communities that may have been victimized by a rigged bidding process because of this ongoing corruption. We're live from Federal Court. I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. Devin and Kimberly, back to you. Guy, I'm sure this isn't the end of it. Any, any indication of how many more people could be caught up in this whole thing here? No indication for the U.S. Attorney's Office except to say that it is widespread and may even extend beyond uh, Macomb County. Uh, certainly in this complaint today, it hints that someone passed that sensitive bidding information to this particular trustee. That person could be indicted. Also, another Macomb County, uh, Macomb Township trustee, rather, Dino Bucci. He was named in a civil lawsuit last week uh, where there were corruption complaints in that as well. So there are a number of things that could be happening here as this continues to unfold. Yep, early. yep. We know you'll uh, keep us posted, Guy. We appreciate it. A Detroit mother says she's absolutely terrified after bullets flew into her home. Take a look at some of the damage here and making matters worse. A 10 year old was inside when these shots were fired. Priya Mann live with more on uh, was well, I guess was this house targeted? I guess that's the question here, Priya. Well, Devin, this woman certainly thinks so. She says the shooting is an escalation of a months long dispute with her neighbors. Now, you mentioned her 10 year old son and other children were inside the home. He narrowly avoided being shot, but something he was using has now been collected as evidence. One of the bullets from that gun went through the phone charger, through the wall. These are the bullet holes where a phone charger was shot out of the hands of a 10-year-old boy. And say, Mommy, look, they shot the phone. They shot a hole through the phone charger. Panic set in, fear set in. The child was scared but otherwise unharmed. The mother of seven was in her living room when bullets started flying. I heard the first gunshot attempted to get up from the table. That's when more gunshots rang out. And I heard my door glass crash in. Monday evening, the woman says nine shots were fired at the home near Meringue and 94. It's too close to home. It hit at home. At the time, there were nine people inside and plenty of children, including a three-year-old. I had everybody hit the floor and I heard my nephew and I heard one of them say, oh my God, I panicked. I thought they had been shot, but they were saying, oh my God, I can't believe they shot in my mama house. When the shots finally stopped, Stopped, she rushed to check on her children. I'm one of the blessed ones that I'm not one of the mothers to scream and holding a child with blood all over. The woman says the shooting follows a months long dispute with her neighbors. In fact, last month, Local 4 covered the conflict, which allegedly stems from a fight at a nearby school. You would never think the grown people were so ignorant that they would stoop to the level of a kid. Turn yourself in. You can run, but you can't hide. The neighbors already seen you. And this mother of seven says she has a pretty good idea who shot at her home. She's relayed that information to Detroit police. She says she's thankful no one in her family was injured. Reporting live from DPD headquarters, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Now, Priya, that woman has uh, been working to help her neighborhood, hasn't she? Yeah, this is a woman who founded an organization that feeds up to 2,000 people in Detroit every week. She says it's troubling someone who's working so hard to help her own community is now the victim of gun violence. Yeah. All right, Priya. Well, now to the condition of that two-year-old we were talking about yesterday, ejected from a car in a crash, but now improving. Yeah, remarkable that she yeah. survived. The toddler's condition was upgraded today from critical to serious. The crash happened just after 4 p.m. Monday. Police say the two-year-old was with her father in a car rushing to the hospital after the little girl got sick. That's when they ended up crashing with another car near Connor and Kenmore. The father is in stable condition tonight. 
We are getting our first look at the man investigators say spray painted graffiti threats against Detroit police and Chief James Craig. Yeah, today 49 year old Stuart Lewis was arraigned on felony charges involving a threat of terrorism. Officers believe Lewis painted the message kill all police and kill James Craig onto this building on State Fair. Lewis was arrested Sunday, then released, but rearrested yesterday. Well, every year, you know, it's coming and yet somehow it's always a, always a jolt to the system, isn't it? It is. It's not hard to, yeah. you know, to listen to. That's easy to listen to. <laughs> ben, there's a snowflake we're talking about here in uh, your weather graphics. A lot of what? All across <laughs> Metro Detroit tonight as we're looking at mainly rain. But watch what happens over the next 36 hours as those temperatures start to drop. The blue starts to show up. And yes, that means we're going to have a couple snowflakes mixed in. In fact, when we were looking at the computer model, looks like two eyes, a nose, and a little, little frowny face. So I guess the computer not happy with it either, uh, but we are going to be staying dry tonight. In fact, a little bit of late sunshine, but man, it's going to be another chilly one as we're expecting 30s for lows. We'll look at your four zone forecast to see how much rain we're going to end up with and who is going to see those snowflakes coming up. All right, Ben. Jason Colthorpe is going to great heights, I think we could say, for a very special story tonight. Jason? Well, I'm still on the ground at this moment, Devin, but the next time I talk to you, that'll be different because the hot air is flowing and it's not just for me this time. We are uh, getting <laughs> eight hot air balloons all ready to go here. And it's all because of one determined young man. You're going to meet him coming up. OK, Jason, we'll be looking forward to that. And a serious flaw exposed in some of the most popular pickup trucks. The one thing experts say is making it dangerous for drivers at night. Hank? Water, we can't live without it. And as you'll see, the struggle for a Detroit mom to get clean running water in her home has been dragging on for almost two weeks now. The thing that worries me the most is that I won't be able to be a mother tomorrow because I don't have water because of somebody else's mistake. Now she's calling Help Me Hank to investigate. We come to the rescue. We'll have that story for you coming up. Tonight, new at six. A cancer patient's fight is made even tougher by thieves. New at 6, see the custom van she needs your help finding in order to get around. Also another criminal who doesn't seem to realize the times in which we live as a home security camera gets some pretty clear footage of his first shot at getting inside. That's coming up at 6 o'clock. All right, well, uh, tonight, Help Me Hank is coming to the rescue of a Detroit woman whose home is without running water. And this problem has been going on for almost two weeks. This woman and her children are relying on bottled water to help them get through each day. As our consumer right, investigator Hank, Hank Winchester shows us, DWSD puts the blame on a property management company. Water. We sometimes take it for granted. The people in Flint, they know all about the struggle to get fresh, clean water in their homes. And as you will see, so too does a Detroit mother worried about the safety of her children. Here's something I had no control over and there's nothing I can do but sit and be a victim. Janisha Dodd wipes away tears thinking about the battle just to get running water in her Detroit home. It's hard. My kids are very understanding. Janisha and her children rely now on bottled water. They have been for almost two weeks now. When you have seven people in your house, you can't wash dishes. This is not all of them. We took some and put them in here because you don't want dishes just laying around everywhere. Dishes in the stove, no running water in the no sink, water. the tub, nothing. Help Me Hank started investigating, getting in touch with DWSD. What's the problem here? Well, it's not a shutoff situation for non-payment. No, Janisha wants to pay. She can't. Why? The company that manages her rental has not yet filed the necessary paperwork to establish her as the person responsible for paying the water bill. It's that simple, but yet that complicated. Janisha says her repeated calls for help to peace of mind property management have been ignored. I went to the company's downtown office. No answer at the door, but on the phone, I did speak with the Hi, person helping to manage property this management. property and the problem. The bottom line is we're just trying to make sure that this woman has water in her home. So can you? And, and that's absolutely no problem. Would it be possible it, if I put you in touch with the person from DWSD who would be able to make that transfer for you so she could pay the bill and get the water restored? 
I, I can go down to the water department and take care of that myself. As you know, we've got a, a woman with children who does not have water. Will that be able to be done as soon as possible? Yes, I'll go down there to the water department and see exactly what they need us to do. The paperwork now being submitted by the property management company. As you can imagine, though, the last few weeks have definitely taken a toll. There's nothing I can do but continue to buy water and hope this works itself out. And we, too, are working to make sure this all gets worked out. We will let you know once the service and the water is restored. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Back to you. All right, Hank, a spokesperson for DWSD tells us they will work with the management company quickly to reestablish service once all the necessary paperwork has been submitted. Hank will stay on it, as he said. Yes, he will. Well, Ben has been warning us uh, that the cool down was coming, but as far as these snowflakes, yeah. I just want to knock him out for yeah. talking about that. Too right. soon. No, it's settle too, down here, Gil. Too Whoa. soon. <laughs> <laughs> One thing at a time. Well, what are you going to do? She looks so anyway. demure. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, it's more bark than bite here. I mean, it's just literally going to be a few flakes. Okay. But the first of the season, you know, does get your attention most of the time. <laughs> Better be because she's coming over there. If you're... I'm going to stand over here, yeah. I think, for the rest to the show. Uh, upper 40s at a couple spots right now, but we are dry. In fact, we're getting the last little burst of sunshine uh, as uh, the clouds start to roll in here tonight. 51 in Metro. Some of our warmer spots in the low 50s down here, but that's below average for this time of year and most locations slightly cooler than what we were working with at this time yesterday. So we're still been watching the radar, which is coming up dry right now, and a lot of those clouds that had formed in the afternoon will start thinning just as soon as that sun goes down, and this is going to be very similar to what we saw last night where those clouds go away pretty quickly. Temperatures drop and uh, we see another night in the 30s before things start to warm up tomorrow and it is not going to be a big warm up. I will tell you that much. Here's a look now at the uh, timing of the rain by noontime tomorrow. I think mostly it's just going to be our south zone that gets wet. This is a good representation of what the radar is going to show, but with dry air near the surface, a lot of this may actually dry out before it hits the ground. So that's what we call Virgo. We may be seeing it on radar, but it may not actually be hitting the ground. And then as that wave rises to the north, it will start to dry out a bit. The big push of moisture comes overnight and again this is after sunset 11 o'clock or midnight we'll start seeing those temperatures cold enough only in our north zone we think this is going to be north of 59 uh, that we'll see a few snowflakes mixed in not going to stick not going to last very long in fact warmer air comes through overnight so that will change back to all rain before we wake up in the morning and by 7 o'clock, still wet for that commute, but we will be seeing that rain exiting shortly after lunchtime for most of us on Thursday. Here's your forecast tonight, dropping down to 35 for the overnight low. Clouds on the increase, a couple areas down near the freezing mark again tonight. 47, that's as good as it gets tomorrow. We'll see clouds for the majority of the day after maybe a little bit of early sunshine, and then that scattered light rain showing up. So we'll break down the rainfall totals in your four zone forecast, and it's going to be about a half inch to three quarters of an inch by the time we're done with this rain uh, going into Thursday. South zone, very similar numbers. May see a little bit more. That blue little circle out there is right around an inch of rain towards Manchester. But again, most locations about a half to uh, three quarters of an inch of rain by the time this is all wrapped up. And there is some warmer air coming as we head towards the weekend. Saturday looks fantastic. 63, a little windy. But hey, anytime you get into the 60s this time of year, we'll take it. Halloween looking pretty good, too. <laughs> a lot of sunshine in 63. 660 right? after what you're talking about tomorrow. I'm, that's I'm for trying sure. to sugarcoat yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> Look over here. Right. And I was just pulling your leg, too. Uh, yeah. You're safe. You're safe with her. Yeah. Right. Doc? Well, which is really better for carving a pumpkin? One of these special knives or something from your kitchen? Dr. Frank McGeorge, I will settle the great carving debate once and for all. All right, Frank, but first, relief coming for owners of VWs tied up in the emissions scandal. Just how much money the company will offer as part of a record-setting settlement. That's next. Coming up tomorrow morning on Local 4 News Today. So this has been a fixture on the side of one local freeway for years. And tomorrow it's coming down. Find out why your ride home might look a little different. Plus, it's Wellness Wednesday, which means the doctor is in. The biggest threat to kids on Halloween is now what you think. Tomorrow at 5 a.m., the simple steps that everyone can take to keep trick-or-treaters a little safer. And wake up with weather and traffic on the fours as well. We get started at 4.30 to 7 a.m. See you in the morning. Get every second. 
A federal judge has approved a $15 billion settlement in the Volkswagen emissions scandal, and that makes it the largest automotive settlement in U.S. history. With the settlement approved, the buyback process will begin. Close to 475,000 owners of VWs and Audis with diesel engines can sell back their cars. You're talking about a half a million owners. This all starts next Tuesday. Buyback values range from $12,000 up to $44,000. The automaker will also pay $2 billion for clean emissions technology. The Catholic Church is handing down some guidelines. They are strict, but they are new guidelines for parishioners who want to be cremated. Yeah, the Vatican published these new instructions this week, and the instructions say cremated remains cannot be kept at a person's home. Ashes must be buried at a cemetery or kept at a Catholic church. That also means a loved one's remains cannot be scattered or divided among family members. The church noted that a traditional burial is still preferred over cremation. New at 5.30. You might be shocked to think that I've forgotten what I was going to say. It's just so beautiful up here. We are high above Oakland County right now, just lifting off because this is a, what we'd call a, a wish ride, a dream ride, and you're going to meet the young man it's all for coming up on Local 4. Florida, 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 again. It's the state that matters most in the race for the White House. Both candidates were there today. Donald Trump's got a new angle on a big issue. And shining a new light on a dangerous flaw, the big issue with some of America's most popular pickup trucks. Next. Watch we Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5.30 starts now. A dangerous flaw exposed. A new study shows headlights on some of America's most popular pickup trucks just don't do their job well enough. That study reveals that just one of 11 pickups tested got top marks. And of the other 10, one got a ranking of acceptable when it came to properly illuminating the road ahead while at highway speed. Rod Maloney has a close look at what seems to be a glaring problem. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is always looking for ways to make cars safer since they're footing the bill for a lot of the problems in cars. So they force the car makers to do a better job. And in this instance, they're talking about the headlights and there's a lot of work to do. They're shining a light on a serious safety hazard. The Insurance Institute's most recent test offers new ratings for pickup truck headlights. And the results, says senior research engineer Matthew Brumbelo, aren't good. Most of the pickups, including the Ford F-150, which is the most popular vehicle in the U.S., have a poor rating. Tests include how far the high and low beams project light on straightaways and on curves. And here is what the IHS is really worried about. It's not so much that the vehicle lights aren't bright for the driver. It's more about the glare for oncoming drivers. Out of the 23 different headlight systems that we rated, 14 had too much glare. Out of 11 small and large pickups tested, only one, the Honda Ridgeline, earned a good rating. And that's only on vehicles with the most expensive trim levels. All four of the small trucks were rated poor, with the Institute singling out the Chevrolet Colorado as particularly so. So were three of the large pickups. Two were deemed marginal, one acceptable. Almost half of traffic fatalities occur either at night or dawn or dusk. And so for the driver to be able to see obstacles, to see the environment and make changes or come to a stop, the headlights are really the only thing that are going to be able to do that. And the Institute is so concerned about this problem that they're not going to add these tests into the overall top safety pick rankings. And with these kinds of problems, the car makers are definitely going to have to change the way they're doing business. In Troy, Rod Malone, Local 4. All right, Rod, other trucks that perform poorly on this uh, include the Chevy Silverado, the Toyota Tundra, the GMC Canyon, and the Nissan Frontier. We've got the full list on the automotive page at clickondetroit.com. Now to unanswered questions, igniting a desperate search for answers. 30-year-old Leonard Daniels was killed on Wednesday, July 27th on Detroit's east side. He was shot multiple times standing outside of his home on the 11,000 block of Reed Street near Whitner Avenue and Kelly Road. Well, today, his mother spoke of the impact of his death and implored anyone with information to come forward. I think it was despicable the way somebody took his life. I think whoever did it is a coward. 
because they ambushed him. Crime Stoppers is offering a cash reward of up to $2,500 for information leading to an arrest. Decision 2016, here we go again. It's Florida, Florida, Florida in the race for the White House. Both candidates today in the biggest of swing states. Steve Handelsman tells us how the stakes are far higher for Donald Trump, whose uphill path to the White House has to run through the Sunshine State. Hey, Steve. Devin, Donald Trump claims today that his gut tells him that he's winning in Florida, and he says his eyes are telling him. So many red Trump hats, he says. And for him to have a shot at the White House in two weeks, he better be right. Few words about working for Trump. Anybody? Donald Trump came to Florida trailing by three points in the new CBS poll and the average of recent Florida polling. But the turnout is heavy for early voting in Florida. And a lot of them are wearing Trump buttons and hats and shirts. With 29 electoral votes, Florida is must win for Trump. And he has a new opening on an old issue. This election is going to be about Obamacare. The White House revealed the cost of coverage will go up next year 22 to 25 percent. It's worse, so charged Trump. That is such a phony number. You're talking about 60, 70, 80 percent in increases, not 25 percent. But Trump stumbled in front of his own workers at his Doral Resort. All of my employees are having a tremendous problem with Obamacare. No, they aren't, he had to be told. 95 percent get health coverage through the company. Hillary Clinton arrived in Florida and slammed Trump. In America, we don't say we're going to keep you in suspense about whether we will respect the outcome of an election. We have free and fair elections. All right, welcome into Trump Tower Live. But on Facebook now is Trump TV. I give you the message straight from the campaign. You don't have to take it through the media filter and all the spin that they put on it. And looking like a pilot for a Trump TV network that could launch after the election and continue the fight against Hillary Clinton. Clinton's main worry now, said a top aide today, is her supporters seeing that she's got a lead in so many polls and not turning out to vote. From Washington, Steve Handelsman, Local 4. All right, thank you, Steve. Twitter is planning to lay off hundreds of its employees, according to a report from Bloomberg. The big round of layoffs could affect up to 8% of the social media company's staff, or about 300 people. The news comes as Twitter continues to struggle, lose money, and stall at just 300 million users. The layoffs could be announced this week or after the company releases its third quarter earnings report on Thursday. Just 300 million. Isn't that funny that how that's That used to be a lot of people, even, yeah, I know. Uh, speaking, uh, it's a pretty good time to take a fall color tour. Yes, and Venice. Tweet here. about that. Yeah, yeah. We should because there are some beautiful s scenes out there right now. Yeah, especially around here, the colors are really starting to pop. So we sent Sky Four up just to take a look at the there trees you because you know that's all you need to do at this time of year. Uh, if you've been up to the UP, they are already past peak. Uh, Northern Lower Michigan is peaking this week, and the colors here in our area are just mm. about hitting uh, their brightest and most gorgeous looking of the season. The video you're looking at was shot today, and as you can see, nice colors sprinkled around some of the trees that have still yet to turn in some of the spots. Now, tomorrow's rain is going to bring down some of those colors, but those trees that are still green will keep their leaves and give us some of that color soon. And you know what? The grass is still sort of emerald green to go along with these colors. Yeah. So it just, it looks fantastic. It's such a long dry stretch in the summer. I wasn't sure what it was going to end up looking like, but that's lovely. Right? It's paid off pretty yeah, well. Not bad yeah, at yes, all. It is gorgeous. Thank you, Ben. Speaking of fall colors, Jason Colthorpe is getting a prime view tonight. A young man is taking the ride of a lifetime yeah. today in a hot air balloon, and he and his family have let Local 4 tag along. So let's head to Jason. Jason, who is, well, do you have any idea where you are about now, Jason? <laughs> I, think, I think we're above Oakland County still. It looks, <laughs> it looks a lot like Oakland County. Detroit's way in the distance. I'll tell you what, how about that for a weather window right there? There is your fall color tour. Amazing. And uh, you can do this anytime, courtesy of the guys who are taking us up today. Wicker Basket Balloon Center. Gordy leading the way for us today. But this isn't just a fall color tour for us. This is kind of day and anybody who's ever been touched by cancer knows what just a terrible disease this is and when it affects the younger generation it's it's almost twice as bad and the young man that's up here with us right now is enjoying this flight and this is his story
William Musgrave loves football. The former defensive end remembers each sack for Taylor's Kennedy High School. It was during football he first felt the pain. That's okay. A year and a half ago, it was official. Cancer, a rare one in seven million nasal cancer. It's a battle. It's a very big battle. An aggressive treatment got all the tumors, but just when he thought he was in the clear, more pain. There's always a fight. Cancer had been in his spine and hips all along that doctors never found. This time, there wasn't much to do, and he came home for good in July. How do you prepare to say goodbye to your child? William calls himself a warrior, but even warriors and their fellow soldiers get tired and angry at something. The point where it never ends. I always think it's going to end, but it really don't. Not just mentally, but financially, spiritually. You lose everything. Because he's 19, he's not eligible for Make-A-Wish, but that's not stopping William from being granted a few, like meeting the Spartan football team and getting assigned football. And today, taking a ride toward the heavens in a hot air balloon. A great place to think about William's message to others. Don't ever give up. Keep fighting. Don't let anything stop you at all. It's not worth it. You might as well just battle with the battle and fight on. Yeah. Did you see him right there? Yeah. Oh, man. We're, you know, just as we're coming back, guys, we see about four or five deer. There goes another one. A bunch of deer running through the trees. And uh, William's been sitting here watching quietly for this entire flight. What do you think so far? Uh, it's amazing. Breathtaking. As the way I put it earlier, it really is breathtaking. <laughs> and... Uh, could take advantage of these tours you know I just want to mention Gordy real quick from uh, Wicker Basket is it normal for your heart to be beating out of your chest and have no feeling be below the neck is that normal <laughs> yeah first time up it is yeah it's a pretty exhilarating flight they're a lot of fun well I certainly want to thank you for making uh, a wish come true for one and uh, I if you haven't done this before, it really is, like William said, breathtaking. There's no other word for it. And uh, we're going to do this for another, I think, hour Aww. and enjoy this. So we'll send it back to you in that, that little studio thing, oh, you know, that's yeah. on the you ground have a prime that you guys are in. Yeah. Jason, and please tell William, William, you know, to enjoy. And boy, he was wise. Battle the battle. Yeah, he is. We're thinking about him right, right now. That's There's it. such uh, freedom, I think, we associate right, with being in a balloon, yeah. and you can certainly appreciate his connection to that. Mm. All right, back with more from Jason coming up. Meanwhile, also, a Michigan woman claims she can't speak anymore and that it is all Jimmy John's fault. The minor mix-up with her order that she says will end up putting her on the unemployment line. And this isn't just any old building. New tonight, why hundreds of people line the streets to see this monster move. Doc? Well, it's not just the knife that matters when you're carving a pumpkin. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Next, see why this tool can make carving your jack-o'-lantern a lot safer. I understand you. New at 6. General Motors doubles its third quarter profit, setting a record for post-bankruptcy. So what does that do for worker profit share? An inkster man in trouble for using a tablet what he's accused of doing to a 16-year-old girl in the shower that landed him behind bars. I'll have that story coming up new at 6. All right, Jermont, we'll see you then. Now, one of those accidents that you think can never happen to you. But every year, a significant number of people end up in the ER with a pumpkin carving injury. So before you start in on your jack-o'-lantern, and don't laugh. It's a tough one to explain, yes. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to make sure it's fun and not frightful. Well, that's exactly right, Karen and Devin. You know, we've all seen these pumpkin carving kits in the store with their little special tools, and maybe you've wondered if they're really worth the money. So we went to an expert to get the answer to that and other pumpkin carving problems. Beaumont hand surgeon Dr. Gregory Sobel doesn't need a calendar to know Halloween is near. Every season has something, whether it's, you know, summer sports and then winter snowblowers. The fall has the pumpkin carving and then uh, the turkey carving as well. And while they may sound silly, pumpkin carving injuries can be quite scary. Well, they can be pretty significant injuries. We've seen um, 
where every finger gets a laceration to the tendon or a cut to the tendon. That can result in a loss of feeling and hand function, even if surgeons can repair the damage. You're talking several months to half a year before you get the return of function in the hand. Dr. Sobel brought his daughter Zoriana and Angelina to demonstrate the right way to carve a pumpkin. The most common accident he sees... But the problem is when people are you know, exerting force on it this way or this way, if they're pushing really hard, especially if the hand is wet, then the hand slips off. The first finger to get it is going to be the small finger. Lesson one, sharper, is not better. A 2004 study actually tested kitchen knives versus pumpkin carving kits. The kits were the clear winner, cutting pumpkins more effectively with a lower risk of injury. So they are safer, they're actually less forced to penetrate the pumpkin with those instruments compared to a regular kitchen knife. So if you cut yourself with one of those pumpkin carving instruments, usually the damage is much less significant. Sobel says don't overlook the scraper tool. It's designed to thin out the layer of the pumpkin where you plan to carve. You don't have to create as much force as well to cut the pumpkin. Dry off the pumpkin and knife between steps to reduce the risk of slipping. Now there is no magic age when children are old enough to help with the actual carving. I think that's child dependent because I see 30-year-olds uh, that may be not appropriate to carve a pumpkin. <laughs> But Sobel stresses close supervision is key with kids of any age. We noticed he was visibly nervous while his own kids were carving, an occupational hazard, he admits. I may take a little bit of the fun out of the pumpkin carving due to the past experience, but uh, I think being prepared is half the battle. And in the end, all of the cuts were safely on the pumpkins. Now, if you do suffer a minor cut, you can treat it at home, but anything more serious, you should probably go to the ER. But the main thing is the scooper tool Got to thin the wall of the pumpkin right. makes it easier to get. So threat. then you're not jabbing exactly. so much. Right. As yeah, a veteran pumpkin carver, my secret is actually handheld power tools. Really? But that might not like the handheld jigsaw <laughs> right. is the perfect. Yep. But that may not make you feel better about the injuries well, that might be coming. Probably not. With as long kids. as they're being used by a sane and sober adult, sure. There you go. There you go. Sane and I sober. Like that. I don't know. If it's what, what's your shot? First person's called you. Then. Ah, there you go. I knew something was coming. Stop.